I'm at Los Angeles International Airport to fly Virgin Atlantic upper class to London Heathrow. There's major construction work going on at the airport and Virgin have relocated to the Tom Bradley terminal whilst terminals 2 and 3 are redeveloped. The check-in areas in the Tom Bradley terminal feel dated. Around the Virgin check-in desk there was an air of disorganisation. There was priority check-in for upper class passengers, but even here there were queues. Check-in completed and it was up the escalators to security. Through security and you move into a more modern section of the terminal. The lounge was located on the second level above a restaurant. It was the Star Alliance lounge. The lounge was spacious, with plenty of spare seating. There was a balcony section looking down onto the main terminal lounge. A selection of snacks and drinks were available. There was also an outdoor seating area, but it was a bit too cold during my visit. The gate was less than a five minute walk from the lounge. Let me know what you think of the video, like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Like check-in, the gate area was also disorganised, with everyone standing around. The flight was on an Airbus A350-1000 aircraft, registration GVT, called Rosie Lee. It was two years old. When priority boarding started, it felt like half the plane was trying to board. Upper class was situated in the front cabin of the aircraft with 44 suites in a 121 configuration. I was in seat 7A. The seat had a width of 20 inches and reclined to form a fully flat bed up to 6 foot 7 in length. departure juice or champagne were offered. Beside the seat was a fixed counter with a USB port and lower down was a second USB and a power socket. The 18 and a half inch entertainment screen folded out in front of the seat. An amenity kit was provided. It consisted of socks, eye mask and earplugs, various creams and lotions, a toothbrush and toothpaste and a pen.
pyjamas were also available in various sizes. On the aisle side of the seat, an armrest could be raised after takeoff. We push back slightly behind schedule as the safety video was played. Hello there. We're delighted to welcome you on board Virgin Atlantic. Thank you for flying with us today. You're no doubt keen to lose yourself in our dazzling world of entertainment. Now sit back and enjoy your flight, and thanks for watching. We had a quick taxi to take off from runway 24 left. The flight time from Los Angeles back to London was scheduled to be 10 hours 15 minutes. For the entertainment system, noise cancelling headphones were provided. The touchscreen system had a range of movies and TV box sets available. Wi-Fi was also available for a fee. At £24 for the whole flight, it was 20% more expensive than a similar BA flight. It also didn't work at first. Later in the flight, it provided download speeds of 12 megabits per second. I settled down to watch Bullet Train, which was entertaining. The drink service started shortly after takeoff. I went for the non alcoholic Dream Maker. It was dry January after all. For the meal service, there was a choice for each of the starter, main course and dessert. Additional main courses were available to pre-order prior to the flight. I started with a smoked salmon with Asian slaw, which came with a good Thousand Island style dressing. For main course, I pre ordered the Nashville style breaded chicken burger. This came with sweet potato wedges. The burger was really good, 
although the wedges were a bit soggy. I finished with the crumble topped apple and vanilla cheesecake. Again this was very good. All in all, a very satisfying meal service. As I finished my meal, the seatbelt signs came on for a period of turbulence, so I had to wait to make my bed. There were three bathrooms for the upper class cabin, two at the front and one at the rear of the cabin. They included Wren toiletries. Unfortunately the shelving wasn't as clean as one might hope, but the toilets and sinks were well maintained throughout the flight. I unpacked my sleep suit on the changing mat. at the suite and the seat reclined to be fully flat. A mattress topper fitted over the seat. There was also a good sized pillow and a duvet cover. The bed was comfortable but just a little narrow and constrained around the feet. As morning came, I explored the loft social space at the rear of the cabin. This didn't get much use on the night flight. And then it was time for breakfast. I ordered the Eggs Royale, which came with a side of fresh fruit and a chocolate pastry. The salmon and spinach were good, but the muffin was very tough. It was okay, but I think I'd choose something different next time. a little while longer and then it was time for the cabin to be prepared for landing. The seatbelt signs went on about half an hour prior to landing. We went once around the hold before lining up over London to land on the northerly runway 27 right. Overall, it was a good flight. The onboard service was excellent, and the food and drink good. Check-in and boarding could have been better, but once on board the aircraft, the Virgin Sparkle started to emerge. We arrived at the gate a few minutes after landing, to a drizzling London morning. Let me know what you think of the review, like, share and comment below. And now check out one of these reviews.